This is a quick video of the Poisson distribution. What we'll see with the Poisson distribution is, is, is a subset of the binomial distribution. So the probability of x equaling little x for a binomial distribution is equal to n choose x, choose x times the probability of success to the power of the number of successes we want times the probability of failure, so 1 minus p n minus x. So that is a a binomial distribution. So that's how you find the probability of a binomial distribution. And remember, for a binomial distribution, the expected value of x, the expected value of x is equal to n times the probability. Now for a Poisson distribution, we actually know the expected value. So we know the expected value, and we call this lambda. So let's say You've been working at a factory for three years or something, and you notice for every meter of wire, there are three flaws. So three flaws for every meter of wire. And so that means lambda is three. So on average, there were three flaws per meter. Now that doesn't mean that there's only three flaws for every meter. Some might have no flaws in them. So a meter of wire, each section of the wire, if we cut it up into meters, would only have, on average, would have three flaws. Now the purpose of this is to find the probability. We want to find out what p is. We want to find out what p is. We know what lambda is, but we want to find out what p is. So then, really what we have, we have p is equal to lambda over n. So n, if we were, if I asked you what's the probability, so if we want to find the probability of one flaw per millimeter of wire. One flaw per one millimeter of wire. Well, to make lambda equal three, we need a thousand millimeters. A thousand millimeters. Because a thousand millimeters times p will give us three flaws per meter. So we have three flaws per meter. So n is equal to a thousand. n is equal to a thousand. Now the problem with that is, can we have can we have two flaws, two flaws in one millimeter of a wire? It's completely possible. So what we want to do is we want to go to an even smaller number. So we want to go where the probability of there being more than one flaw per section of wire is extremely small. So we'll make, go to even a micron, where there are a thousand microns, crons, or micrometers per millimeter. So that's extremely small. So that's a million. That's a millionth of a meter. So we can we can probably feel safe with there being no with there being only one flaw per millionth of meter of wire. So that's a safe bet. So but let's just be really safe. Let's just have n go to infinity. n go to infinity. So that means we're going to take the limit so what we're going to do is, we know what p is. We know p is equal to lambda over n. And we're going to have n equal infinity. So if we plug this for p there and there, and then take the limit as n approaches infinity, we will have a Poisson distribution. So let's do that real quick. So this is now equal to the limit, the limit as n goes to infinity where n choose x, so we have we have n trials choose x, of which will be infinity trials, and we're choosing x of them, times lambda over n to the power of x, 1 minus lambda over n to the power of n minus x. So now we have this, and now we have to actually take the limit and this is now just going to be a pure exercise of limits where we take something to infinity. And what we'll see is we actually get an e, we actually get e to the negative of something, which is kind of impressive, and we get a whole bunch of other stuff. So this is now a game of limits. So let's just remember that if we have a limit of f, f, x, and gx, that is equal to the limit of just f of x, times the limit of g of x, g of x. So we can actually break this apart into separate little pieces. So let's do that real quick. 
let's do that. So we're going to have this be one piece and this be one piece. So let's focus in on this piece right here. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus lambda over n, n minus x. Well, that's equal to, I mean, really, that's just equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus lambda over n, n times 1 minus lambda over n to the power of negative x. So, if if n is going to infinity, what does what happens to this piece? And I mean, the reason I broke that apart, this, this, okay, let's say we have 6 to the power of 3 minus 2. Well, what's that? Well, that's just equal to 6. That's equal to 6. But what else is it? Well, that's just 6 times 6 times 6 times negative 2. 6 to the negative 2. Well, that's just 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. So this cancels out with that 6, this cancels with that 6, and we just get 6. So that's what I did there. I just They have the same base, so you can just break them apart. But the reason I did that, the reason I did that is because when n is infinity, when this number is really big, so when we have 1 minus lambda over a really big number, a really big number to the negative x, well, this practically becomes 0, so that's pretty much 0. So now we get 1 minus 0 to the power of negative x. Well, what's 1 minus 0? That's just 1. What's 1 to the power of anything? So to the power of anything, that's just 1. That's equal to 1. So now this part right here is equal to 1. So we don't even need that anymore. So we can erase this part. So... So we can erase that part, because that's just equal to 1, so that's 1 now. Now, what is the limit as n approaches infinity for this part? So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 minus lambda over n to the power of n. So now they're going to infinity. So let's just say for the heck of it, lambda is equal to 1, just for right now. So if we made lambda equal to 1, we now have 1, 1 minus 1 over a really big number, so some really big number, to the power of, let's say, a million. So what's, so that is a million, to the power of a million. So let's pull out a calculator and do that real quick. What is that equal to? So we get, we get 1 minus 1 divided by a million, right, a million, to the power of a million, right, a million. What is that equal to? That's equal to that number. Well, let's just, for the heck of it, take that to the power of negative 1, to the power of, n or, oops, I can do that right there. So if you take that to the negative 1, if you take the reciprocal of that, you get e. So this to the power of negative 1 is e, is equal to e. Or, or another way of writing that is this is equal to e to the negative something. It could be negative 1. So what we see, if you were to instead replace this 1 with lambda, this 1 with lambda, this actually now becomes e to the negative lambda. So when you take something like this, where n approaches infinity, you get e to the negative lambda. So let's actually write that out. So now what we get, we get, we get this now has e to the negative lambda. So now we have this part taken care of. Let's move on. So that part is taken care of. Let's move on to this part. So let's erase this. So now let's take care of this part. So now we have n choose x, lambda divided by n to the power of x. The power of x. So what will we see with this? Well, what we'll see is that this now becomes n factorial all divided by n minus x factorial 
x factorial, so that's just n choose x, times lambda to the power of x, all divided by n to the power of x. Now, this is again, this is all to the limit as as n approaches infinity. So I forgot to write that. That's supposed. To, this is also supposed to be right there. So this needs to be here and here. And I'm gonna. I should probably keep on writing that, but I'm gonna forget about writing it just for now. So, but just just remember that this part limit needs to be right here as well. So, now, what if what what really is this? Well, what that really is that is that is n times n minus one times n minus two times dot 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 n minus x plus one. So this part right here, this part simplifies into this. So now we get this for this one little part. So why did we do that? And ch make sure, check to see if this works. Try it out. It, it does work. So if we had, we had n equal five, so five factorial is equal to five times four times three times two times one. And if we chose, we had x equal two, so we chose two. Well, that would be that would be five minus two, so five minus two is equal to three divided by three times two times one. So notice that these cancel out, and really that just simplifies into this equation. That means we have x n. So if we were to multiply all this out, if we were just to multiply this out. If you were to just magically multiply all this out, you would get n to the power of x plus a whole bunch of nasty stuff. But the big thing is you get n to the power of x. So now what we get is the limit as n approaches infinity is now n to the power of x plus a whole bunch of other stuff all divided by x factorial times lambda over x all over n over x. So just for the heck of it, let's move this over there and that over there. So let's just switch places with those two. So we're just going to move those two things across from each other. So this now becomes n over x, and this becomes x factorial. So what you'll see is when you actually multiply all this out, n to the power of x, it, this is the largest number there would be. So n to the power of x. There won't be another n that has a higher power than n to the power of x. So what we'll see is if this goes to infinity, if this goes to an extremely large number, extremely large number, all this stuff is irrelevant over here. That becomes irrelevant. So then it's just n to the power of x over n to the power of x, or infinity divided by infinity, and infinity divided by infinity. Even though there's some other stuff over here, it's small in comparison to infinity. So when you just have infinity divided by infinity, this part right here, all this, all this becomes 1. And then this is constant, because this is just to the power of x. So nothing over here is, is to the power of n. So what we get is, we get, this is now lambda to the power of x, all divided by x factorial. And what we see is, this equation, all this equation over here is comes lambda to the power of x, all divided by x factorial. So just to rewrite that, for a Poisson distribution, for a Poisson distribution, we get the probability that x is equal to little x is equal to lambda, or the, the expected value of x, to the power of x times e to the negative lambda all over x factorial.